When undertaking an EV build, one of the first things to consider is batteries. So there are so many things to consider when you're strategizing on what sort of batteries you want. Today I'm gonna to walk you through some of the things that I consider when I'm choosing my batteries. Uh, we'll do some comparisons and then I'll show you which ones I chose for this build. For today's sponsor, we have TechNet. This is an EV charger. So it's got a nice carrying case, mounting hardware, user manual. Here's the good stuff. All right, it's got some two mounting brackets. This is for the charge handle. That's for the charger itself. Oh, look at that. It's really nice. And there's the handpiece. Yeah, that is really high quality. I always love the dust covers. So they even have a cord adapter that goes just to a regular wall outlet. All right, looks like it's got an app. So here's inside the app. So again, you've got swipe to charge. You got charge mode, so you can do real time or delayed charging. The delayed charging really helps take advantage of using energy in non-peak hours to maximize your savings. It also has a record of your charging, a record of your power by month, by year, by day. So again, you can read all the things like your current temperature, total output. Right now we're not currently connected. We'll go ahead and charge up though. This is a dual voltage unit, meaning it works on 220 or just regular 110 house outlet. It has four amp setting, 32, 24, 16, and 10 amps. It also has an automatic restart. So for whatever reason, if the power goes out, when it comes on, it will resume charging. It's got a cable length of 25 feet. So we're going to evaluate the charger here and the specifically the length of the cable. So it's against this wall. Most garages are around 20 feet. So this is at the very front. We're gonna make sure it reaches and do some charging. Maximum power of 7.6 kilowatts. It is FTC and ETL certified. It has its own GFCI circuit breaker. You can schedule your charging to optimize savings during non-peak hours. It has an LCD screen to communicate all the important parameters. And it also has an IP66 protection rating. And it can charge anywhere from minus 30 degrees all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so we got a green flashing light. This is also changed. You'll see the amps are climbing up. Again, right around 11 amps is what my onboard charger will do, and it started charging. Okay, you can see the app also shows the same information. You see we're just doing real-time charging. We could have also done delayed charging. We'll go ahead and use the app to turn it off. You heard it click, so that means we're off. Amps and power go to zero. And just for fun, we'll say, nope, we're not really done. You heard it click, we're back to charging. So if you are in the market for a new EV charger, I'll leave a link in the video description below. I'm gonna show you the cells that I got real quick. After I show you them, um, we're gonna go through some comparisons, show you some of the different batteries I've worked with, um, some of the pros and cons, and uh, do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Getting batteries today. All right, batteries finally made it. So we ordered these, uh, I'm gonna say maybe two months ago. Um, this is a brand new batch. So we actually waited a couple weeks so we could get the freshest, newest ones. These ones actually come with a three year warranty. And I'll go through some of the specs and tell you why I chose these specific batteries. I cut my finger opening the uh, shipping container for the battery box and it's deep enough that it kind of throbs when you let it hang down. So I've been doing this all day and I just, I tell you, if you're having a bad day, just do this, walk around, you, you feel like you're uh, just won the Super Bowl. All right, looks like they made it all in good condition. Packaging looks great, nothing looks damaged. Uh, we'll pull one of these out though so we can take a closer look. All right, so we've got kind of like the positive and negative terminals here that are covered with tape. Um, I believe these are, I'll call it screwed on backwards. So meaning like if you screw them on the other way, they'll connect very well with the other modules. This is a 4P6S. So four in parallel, six in series. So I don't know, I might pop off one of these end caps so we can take a closer look. And then they've got these kind of through spots for, uh, I'll call it like all thread. Um, so basically we can take off this plate and just put on another battery, another battery, and just have really long uh, all thread to kind of cinch them all together. All right, this, so the cells have their connections on top. 
but the other three sides, so kind of the left and right sides as well as the bottom, have kind of the aluminum cooling features. So we'll definitely be utilizing those. The top, we're actually gonna be adding some spots for thermistors as well as cell taps. Again, the top and bottom kind of look the same. They've got these thin aluminum kind of uh, plates that will help keep everything cool. They kind of go down in between the modules and also here on the end. So we can kind of cool from a lot of different directions. So I think this will be really good. So it looks like 34 pounds even. So I'll give you a little info on the actual cells. These are lithium nickel manganese cobalt cells. These are pouch style cells, not the cylindrical ones. Uh, nominal voltage is 3.7. Peak or max voltage is 4.2. I had these made, so these are new batteries, not used. And they are configured in a 4P6S. So that's four in parallel, six in series. So each individual module has 2.7 kilowatt hours of energy. So cost, I was able to get these for a little less than 600 bucks. So the max voltage for one of these modules is right around 25 volts. So I got 16 of these, so full pack voltage would be about 403 volts. We will probably max it out right around 400, so we're not going all the way to the very edge. So these are three different battery modules that I've worked with. Um, I should also compare like a Tesla one. So imagine there's a Tesla one, maybe I'll put a picture here. But I'm gonna kind of go through some of the key elements we discussed and tell you kind of where these stack up. You may decide which one's better for your application, but I just wanna kind of give you some of the details. All right, going through the battery modules. This one is the Chrysler Pacifica. It's an LG Chem model. This is also an LG Chem. Um, I got this one from EV West and apparently they can no longer get it. So it's kind of discontinued. Um, I got this one from my new source. I got it directly from a battery manufacturer. So that way I don't have to go through another party. They don't pass up costs. And uh, anyway, so I think that's a good deal. Um, and then there's the Tesla ones. So the challenge is the Tesla ones, they're always gonna be used. So first let's go through the application that I'm looking at. Um, and this is for the Nissan 300ZX. After discussing with the customer, we wanted about a 40 to 45 kilowatt hour pack, looking for about 150 mile range. So again, that's kind of roughly half the pack of a Tesla. We might not be quite as aerodynamic, but we'll also be hauling about uh, five or 600 pounds less uh, weight. So let's go through um, some of the things here. Cost, um, the ones up top, um, I could source them for call it $800, $799. Uh, these ones, when I could get them, they were $499. Um, these ones are $557. The Tesla ones, if you get a used one, they're all over the place. Uh, I saw some on eBay for as low as like $300 um, for a module, um, but some of the more reputable places were all the way up to like 1500 per module. So this would be 14,382. This one would be 13,972. This one would be 8,912. Now again, the Tesla one kind of varies. So if you got them from the reputable source, you're looking at $24,000. So let's talk about how many modules you would need for kind of a 40 to 45 kilowatt hour pack. So for this one, this is a 2.6 kilowatt hours. So you need roughly 18 units. That would get you a total of 46.8 kilowatt hours. For this one, you would need 28. Um, that's a 1.6 kilowatt hour module. And that would give you a, that would give you a total of 44.8 kilowatt hours. This one is a 2.7 kilowatt hour pack and you would need 16 to get you to 42.6. You'll notice you could divide those differently and get a slightly different kilowatt hour pack. There's another element that you need. Um, you can't just pick any number. Um, each of these has a nominal voltage and we wanna end up right around 400 volts for a Tesla system. This one's about 60 volts. So you need six of them to get you up to that 400. And that, mean, that also means your pack configuration is a little odd because once you get up to the 400 volts, um, if you want to get more range, you actually have to then have a separate pack. So this one, we'd almost have to have three packs in parallel. Um, that can become a little bit tricky. Um, this one, they actually make uh, this or they make kind of a double pack. So you can do it either way. This one, you need 28, but if you chose the double thick one, you'd only need 14 to get you up to that 400 volts. And this one, you need 16 to get you up to the 400 volts. The challenge with the Tesla pack 
is you actually need 16 of those. And so you can see just the pure size. Um, it's very challenging, the size and the weight. So I'm gonna go through the weight next. So the Tesla modules, they're 55 pounds. Up here at top, this LG Chem one for the Chrysler Pacifica. They come in right at right around 40 pounds, 38 or 40 pounds, depending on which site. I measure mine at 40, but they're listed at 38. This one here measures 18.2 pounds. This one here measures 34 pounds. So total pack weight for each system. So this top one is 684 pounds. This one would be 509 pounds. This one would be 544 pounds. So size, let's talk about just size. So this top one here, so this direction here, it's 14.25 inches. We'll call that length eight inches and then height is 6.25. So for this one, 16.75, we got five and then height is 4.125. This one is essentially square, like 9.5, 9.5, and then the height is 5.625. So all these I didn't find C ratings, but some of them did have um, max amps for 10 seconds. This one said 800 amps. This one was at 1,000 amps. This one was at 1,440 amps. Um, the Tesla cells, I believe, are 1,500 amps. So the things I like to compare are per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour per volume. So meaning if you could have all that energy down in a very, very tiny space, that's actually very desirable. Because we've got kilowatt hours per volume, we actually want, for the same volume, we want tons and tons of kilowatt hours. So we actually want this number to be as big as possible. So for the Chrysler Pacifica, 0 0.0036. For the LG Chem, 0 0.0046. And for these ones, my new ones, it's 0 0.0052. So again, these ones are good when it comes to volume. So it's got a lot of energy that we can use for a smaller volume. So the weight, again, we kilowatt hours per weight. So again, we want tons and tons and tons of kilowatt hours per the same weight. So again, we want this number to be the biggest. That means it's the best. So LG Chem actually has the, a better one per weight. So it's 0 0.0879. The Chrysler Pacifica is 0 0.068. And these ones are 0 0.083. Here's another important one for you. So kilowatt hours per cost or per dollar. So again, you want as many kilowatts as you can get for the same dollar. So again, we want this one to be a high number. So for the LG Chem, it's 0 0.0032. For the Chrysler Pacifica, 0 0.0032. And for these ones I got, 0 0.0047. So quite a bit better, call it bang for the buck. Real quick, we're gonna go through battery configurations. And when I say that, people refer to things as like a 4P6S. What does that mean? So a battery has the ability to discharge a certain amount. So we'll say this one has the ability to do one amp, right? So it's gonna give up one amp of power. So for a Tesla, what that means is if we, we would need to design a battery that was so big and so powerful that it could give up 1,000 amps, right? So if this is a 400 volt battery, this is a 400 volt battery, this would work for a Tesla. That's not how we do it. So let me show you how it's more traditionally done. But we'll say you're back here with your 400 volt battery that gives up one amp. So what is more traditionally done is you take, and you've got a whole bunch of these. So if you had, a thousand batteries and you connected them all, you know, positive, positive, negative, negative. So that's all in parallel. You would have a 400 volt system that could give up a thousand amps. So we're getting closer, but this is still not quite how it's typically done. So we're back here with our one amp battery. Typically, lithium ion, I'm gonna say the majority of the cells that I deal with, um, they're usually like around 3.7 volts. So how to get to 400 volts is you need to connect them in series. So connected, so like negative to positive, negative to positive, um, this is 3.7, 3.7. So these add up. So this is like 7.4, 11.1, so then, so then you're like at 11.1 .1 volts, 
and you've got like, you still only can deliver one amp. So you're, you're kind of, you're saying, okay, how do I, how do I make this work? Well, what we typically do is then we'll put some in parallel and some in series. All right, so this is just a really simplistic drawing, but basically this would be a four piece, so four in parallel and then six in series. And so what this does, um, every row that you do will add 3.7 volts and every column that you do will add in the amperage. All right, so remember adding in this way adds voltage. So 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, that gets us 22.2 volts. Adding this way adds the amps. So it's not like we get six amps, we get one amp, one amp, one amp, one amp. So that'd be like four amps, 22 volts for this module. And then we have essentially one module, two modules, three. So you got a whole bunch of modules and then this is a pack. So again, cells, modules, pack. So the modules I have, um, they don't just supply one amp. This was just for kind of demonstrative purposes. I think my, just one module, I think is like 144 or 1,440 amps uh, for like 10 seconds. You can do multiple packs. I've done that before, but uh, it's a lot easier. I think more best practice to do um, all in series. So I hope I didn't confuse you further, but uh, that's uh, when we talk about cells, that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about modules, that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about pack, that's what we're talking about. All right, we're gonna take off, take off a couple of these end caps so you can see uh, the construction. And again, this, this whole battery module is 25 volts. So we're not talking high voltage. Nevertheless, we always wanna be careful. So this makes it a little easier to see what we're talking about, 4P6S. All right, so I'll try and explain this. It's a little challenging, but each cell has, I'll call it two tabs. So a positive and a negative. And each one of these uh, that has the screws actually has two cells going to it. So there's, there's a pouch on that side and a pouch on that side. So, well, let's, let's show you over here. So essentially any row has two cells. So there's 12 rows, but essentially there's 24 total cells. So these four are all together. So again, that's 4P6S. So those four are in parallel along with these four, along with these four are in parallel. It's then linked in series. And then again, these four and those four are linked and then in series, those and those, those and those, those and those. So that's how we get the 4P6S. All right, this is the crate of batteries. I'm gonna go ahead and test all the cells. Um, I'm just gonna write it on some tape so we've got information for all of them, make sure we're good to go. So I just tested the 96 cells and they were all good. There has been one time in the past where I actually had a bad cell. It was like even below three volts. So um, just good to check them all before you kind of start doing a lot to them. Um, they were all 3.5, I'll say nine was the average. Uh, the lowest I believe was 3.8, sorry, 3.586 and the highest was 3.9 four, I think. So anyways, all within um, a few hundredths of a volt. So very good. So it's an exciting day to get batteries for the Nissan. Um, next up is going to be figuring out where we can put them all, building a battery box. So it's all very exciting. I hope you learned something today. So hopefully we've uh, unraveled some of the mystery of batteries and battery selections and what to look for. That'll do it for this time. See you next time. Hey. <laughs>